Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is me coming up with some recommendations for the nine prompts for the Her Storyathon that I am co-hosting with Charlotte during the month of March in honor of Women's History Month. If you haven't heard of the readathon, I will put the announcement video in the cards and in the description box for you but it is essentially all about celebrating women from history. So these books are also great if you just want to read something for Women's History Month and aren't participating in the readathon, although I certainly hope that you will. So why don't we dive right in? So as I mentioned, there are nine prompts and I've tried to provide two books for each. I've tried in most cases to give a fiction and nonfiction option, but it's not perfect. There are also a couple books that I slipped in here that are anticipated reads for me or books that I'm really excited about that I haven't gotten to yet. The majority, however, are books that come highly recommended by yours truly. So the first prompt for the Her Storyathon is Different Country. The books I've chosen are not the US because I am in New York. Um, so the first book is Unwomanly Face of War by Svetlana Alexeyevich. This is a book that I've talked about so much on this channel already. It was my favorite book of 2021. I talk all about why that's the case in my Q4 bookish bracket if anyone is interested. But is it? it is an oral history on Soviet women participating in World War II and it is absolutely heart-wrenching and it's a book that I haven't stopped thinking about. I like I'm very much looking forward to rereading it at some point. The other book that I chose which was a novel is Scarlet Contessa by Jean Calagridis. Now this is a book that I have not read yet but I have read several books by Jean Calagridis and all of them have been such a fun time. She focuses on the Italian Renaissance and so this book is set in Italy and it's about Caterina Sforza who is this fascinating woman from the Italian Renaissance um, who was politically savvy, who basically brought the Vatican to its knees and was just incredibly brave and courageous. She basically took on the Pope and the Borgias. Like her life is unreal. So I highly recommend it just because basically Jean Caraligridis is just a great author. So there you go. Next we're moving to non-titled women which is to read books about women who don't have titles. So no royalty and no nobility. The books I've recommended for this are A Woman of No Importance by Sonia Purnell which is all about an American who infiltrates German occupied France to create this vast spy network and it's a book that I recommend for anyone who maybe wants to start reading more nonfiction but isn't sure where to start because it reads like a spy thriller. It is literally sit on the edge of your seat so fascinating but she is not a titled woman so I would recommend that. The next book is Blood Water Paint by Jo Joy McCullough and this is actually a novel in verse so it is a pretty quick read but it is about Artemisia Gentileschi who is I think what you would consider an Italian Baroque artist, a painter, and she wins a trial against her rapist back in like the 1600s and the book is so raw, so fascinating the way that it uses her life and also the subjects that she paints to create the story. And it's a book that I can't find my copies. I think I loaned it to someone, but it's a book that I have not forgotten about since reading it. It obviously is a book that does cover triggering topics, so it's not going to be for everyone, but it was truly fascinating and actually the first novel in verse that I've ever read. Next we have Local Woman and this is obviously very subjective and based on your own geographic location but I am in New York and I am in the US. So the books that I recommend for this unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you want to look at it are both 
nonfiction, the first of which is Radium Girls by Kate Moore. Um, this is a book that I feel like everyone and their mother has read at this point. Um, it is definitely a booktube darling, but it is about these young women who are working in these factories painting the faces of like watches and dials, but they're using radium and they're lip pointing. So they're ingesting the radium and it, as we know now, can make you very, very sick. So the book is about their physical decline, the mystery around that because they don't know what is causing it. And then ultimately the companies, the factories trying to say that it's not their fault. And it is a book that fills you with sort of a righteous sort of rage, but it is so, so good and also really, really accessible. The next book, which I wanted to grab um, because it's stunning, is The Women Who Made New York by Julie Sh Shelfo. Um, but it's basically one of those books that has like short biographies on various women who lived in New York. And it also has these like gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations throughout. So it is what I would call a pretty quick read. Um, perfect for readathon, but it's, it's just gorgeous. And I love that the Statue of Liberty on the cover has a tattoo and like Marilyn Monroe lipstick and beauty mark. It's just, it's just, it's just cute. Um, but yeah, so this is another recommendation, but it's a pretty quick read for a readathon, as I mentioned, because it does have illustrations and all that in it. Next, we have letters, diaries, essays, and memoir. And I have two books here, one that is fiction, one is nonfiction. The nonfiction one is Selected Letters of Charlotte Bronte. And this is a book that I picked up for Victober a couple of years ago and didn't end up getting around to, but it is letters written by Charlotte Bronte. So if you're a fan of Charlotte Bronte or the Bronte sisters or that particular time period, this is one that's worth a read. The other book that I recommend that is actually fiction is The Many Lives and Secret Sorrows of Josephine B by Sandra Guland, which is the first book in a trilogy. And it is about the life of Josephine Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte's empress. And it's written as a collection of like diary entries and some letters from what I recall. But the first book is really interesting because it basically starts with her life as a young girl living in the West Indies, so the opposite side of the Atlantic, to her journey to France, living through the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror, and ultimately meeting Napoleon Bonaparte, her future husband. It made me really, really fascinated about her and about the Napoleonic period in history in general, but I've recommended this on my channel before. I'm going to recommend it once again. Then we have Women You Admire. So I want to obviously give a shout out to Catherine the Great by Robert K. Massey because Catherine the Great is probably my like top shelf, the reigning queen of my historical girl crushes. I am so captivated by her life and her story. And part of that is because of the Robert K. Massey biography. I knew quite a bit about her already, but this just brought her to life in such a way. It is a chunky book, so it is a little ambitious for a readathon, but I feel like I read it really quickly. And honestly, anyone who I know who has read it has really, really enjoyed it. So if you're interested in Russian history and want to read about one of their Tsarinas, I'd recommend this one. If you want something that is a little easier to digest, a little lighter, I would say Lady Clementine by Marie Benedict. This is all about Clementine. Sorry, I said it wrong the first time. It's Clementine, Lady Clementine. This is a book all about Clementine Churchill, Winston Churchill's wife. I read this book and 
wanted to know all there was about her. So I ended up picking up an actual biography and reading it very shortly after reading this book. It is about her life basically from the time she marries Winston Churchill to the end of World War II. It really covers their marriage, but also shines a light on sort of the lesser known facts about how important Lady Clementine was to the war efforts and to her husband's political career and really, really makes her into this truly inspiring individual. She was much more liberal than her husband ended up being. Um, but I was just fascinated. And this is a sort of like historical fiction that I do feel like it's a little bit lighter, a little bit frothy. Um, it's, it's just, it's not like the hard hitting, very dramatic, very tragic sort of historical fiction that I really, really enjoy but I still really enjoyed this one. So yeah. The next prompt is Underrepresented Women, which is about celebrating BIPOC women, LGBTQ plus women, neurodiverse women, and anything, any sort of classification that would mean that these women were marginalized. And the two books that I want to talk about are actually two books that I haven't read yet, but that I do have my eye on. So the first book is Paper Bullets by Jeffrey H. Jackson. And this is just interesting because this is about an LGBTQ plus couple, these two artists, these two women who were known for their cross-dressing and gender bending art, who went on a campaign to use their art to demoralize the Nazis. Like they went on an anti-Nazi campaign and that just sounds so, so badass. So I do own this book, it is on my physical TBR and I definitely want to get to it. The next book is Sally Hemings by Barbara Chase Ribot, I believe is how you pronounce the last name. But the author has a book that's coming out this year that I'm really interested in. And when I discovered that there was this book as well, I definitely added it to my wish list. So it is a book that is all about Sally Hemings, the enslaved person who had six or seven children with Thomas Jefferson. And so I know some of her story, but not a ton. I also don't read a ton of historical fiction set during this time period. But this one definitely interests me, so I do want to give it a shot. The next prompt is for the golden oldies, those pre-1800s ladies. And the first book that I would recommend is Catherine by Anya Seton, which is all about Catherine Swinford, who lived during the 14th century and was the longtime mistress of John of Gaunt, one of the most powerful men in England at the time. And it's about their sort of star-crust romance. And it is an older book. I think it was written in the 1950s. So the writing style is a little bit different, but if you're into like knights and chivalry and all that sort of thing, you might enjoy it. Um, I think I gave it four stars when I read it in December, but I did genuinely like enjoy it and pick up another book by the author. So highly recommend. And then you have Tigress of Forli by Elizabeth Lev. This is a book I've recommended before, I think actually for Women's History Month, but it is the biography on Katarina Sforza. So you can see that I really, really am interested in her. I read this several years ago. It inspired me at the point to want to endeavor to write a novel about her, but Jean Calgridis beat me to it. Um, in all seriousness, I don't think I could ever write a novel. I just don't have the degree of discipline that you require for something like that. But this is just a book about Katarina Sforza and her life and it is fabulous. Not a whole lot to add here because I already spoke about her at the very beginning of this video, but she lived during the Italian Renaissance, so she is a pre-1800s lady. Next we have Woman in Science and the first book I'd recommend is Enchantress of Numbers by Jennifer Chiravini. I feel like I am butchering that, 
but it is a novel about Ada Lovelace, the world's first computer programmer, and the only legitimate daughter of Lord Byron. I read this several years ago, thought it was fascinating. I knew of Ada Lovelace, but didn't know more than that she had something to do with science and math. Um, so I found it really illuminating. I would say in writing style and tone, it is pretty similar to Marie Benedict. So if you like Marie Benedict, you might enjoy this book as well. Next we have No Man's Land by Wendy Moore and this is a book about two female doctors who open war hospitals during World War One, at a time when female doctors were very much a novelty but they almost exclusively only tended to women or children. So these were women who were taking care of male patients but also male patients who were injured during battle, which is a whole, whole big deal. But the like, incredible thing about these women is that they end up running a military hospital in London that is almost exclusively staffed by other women, like the orderlies, the nurses, the doctors, anesthesiologists, all that stuff, all women. And it was just so incredibly fascinating. But yeah, basically I recommend this to anyone who is interested in the history of medicine or really fascinated by like World War I history because the things that these women accomplished, the stories of their lives, it was just so fascinating, so courageous. And yeah, I'd never really seen that spin on World War One history before, so I really enjoyed it. And the last prompt for the Her story -a -thon is the never heard of before category, which is to read a book about a woman you've never heard of. So I've chosen two that were new to me, so maybe they're new to you. One is The Queen's Fortune by Alison Pataki, which is about Desiree Clary, the woman that Napoleon jilted for Josephine Bonaparte. I listened to this as an audiobook. I think it was actually my first audiobook ever, and I devoured it. I had never heard anything about Desiree Clary, but hearing about her and how her life with Napoleon kind of continues to intersect even after they are no longer romantically involved was absolutely fascinating. And then like a twist of fate that ended up with her being like the queen of Sweden. It, it was just a really fun time. It was also during that period where I was just fascinated by anything Napoleonic war related. So it was really, really good. I think Alison Pataki is a really good writer um, and the story, the characters were just really vibrant to me. And the last book is one that is an anticipated release for me and I may have already pre-ordered it, but it is The Duchess Countess by Katherine Osler, which is about the Duchess of Kingston, Elizabeth Chudley, who basically scandalized London when she was basically brought to bear for bigamy. She's also the character, the woman who inspired Becky Sharp in Vanity Fair. And I'm just here for it. I love a good scandal. And this just sounds incredible. So I did pre-order this book. I think it comes out the end of February or early March. So depending on when I get it, it might end up on my own TBR. We'll see. But this is a book that I am very, very excited about because this woman sounds like quite a piece of work. So there is that. So yeah, <laughs> those are just a few ideas for books that you could potentially read for the Her story -a -thon or just read for Women's History Month or, you know, just read at any point during the year if you want to read a book about a fascinating woman from history. Um, some of these are among my favorites, so they come highly recommended by yours truly. But 
I hope that they helped, gave you some inspiration for books to read for the readathon. And if you have any recommendations for people, leave them in the comment section or join us on our Discord and you can leave some recommendations there. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe because all those things help this little channel grow and they mean the world to me. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.